Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Zootopica. It's a podcast where everything zoology from day-to-day -day life to modern research to popular culture, like those crazy Hollywood movies, they all mix. Um, I'm Richard Somira, I'm a zoologist and I'll be your host. Joining me today is a good friend of mine, Leila Ansari. Hi, thank you so hi, much. Leila. Hi, hi. Welcome to Zootopica. Thank you for having me. I feel really honored to be a part of this. Thank you. Um, so, so Leila, I am having a co-host who's not from a science background, um, but you are not new to the whole public communication field, aren't you? Um, I'm a, a new motivational speaker, um, aside from being a business owner, the mother of three. You are and, a lot. Um, yes, yes, yeah. like, like you, Rue, like you, <laughs> juggling mini balls. So the whole point, uh, Leila, is that I would love to have someone who can ask the other questions where people are here not to ask. Yeah, right? absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued and excited and I definitely don't have as much knowledge as the both of you. So um, I will be bringing the kind of layman's input as much as possible. That's exactly <laughs> what we're after. So, so today's topic is about sharks, everything sharky. Now I know uh, as a biologist- Can I, I give side effects? <laughs> That's from Jules, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the one that changed most people's lives forever in my generation. No, absolutely. Like, we are going to have a complete episode about how blockbusters and Hollywood movies have painted a different picture from Snakes on a Plane to Lake Placid to Jules. That's going to be a complete episode. Mm. Um, talking about today's one, sharks. Mm. So I have a, I have a inherent um, interest in anything that can kill me. Um, so sharks have been in my radar, but I'm no specialist. Mm. For today's episode, we have a specialist. And I wanted to have uh, Amanda Elizabeth. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. So Amanda, I have your pedigree here. You have done quite a lot of work in that field. Um, I see that you have a master's in, um, in from Murdoch. Uh, so I've got a master's from UWA. Okay. So I did um, a master's in biological science there. and focused on sharks. So I studied the electroreception in sharks and rays, and that's basically their ability to detect um, electrical fields. That's going to be an interesting topic well, to we're discuss. All, we're all electrical, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, so yeah. they have two yeah. senses that we don't have, yeah. um, and one of them is that ability. So yeah, it was really interesting. Fascinating. Mm. That's going to be, and, but on top of that, like from your, on top of your academic career, you, I see that you are in the uh, board of directors for Australian Biome Project. Yes, um, so that's a new project here in Perth and they're looking at buildings similar to um, what they've done in England. They have these big domes showcasing the sort of the botanic, um, you know, the landscapes and everything of the area and that's what they want to do here. It's sort of create this, um, I guess, almost like a live entity almost showcasing what we have in WA, like our coastline oh. is so diverse and our landscapes, landscapes are so diverse. So. Yeah, um, bringing sort of everything from along our coastline, which is so vast, um, into one spot. So tourists can come and have a look and, you know, see what WA has to offer. So a really exciting project um, that will hopefully get off the ground in the next year or so. Oh, cool. So, so there's, it's going to be a kind of an exhibit? The general public can participate? Yeah, almost, yeah, right. yeah. So yeah, it's sort of like, I guess, a modern age museum, if you will. But yeah, sort of showcasing the biota um yeah and flora of wa that's awesome, awesome. will it be interactive or do you absolutely oh, wow. yeah. very interactive yeah that's so you can immerse it. yourself and yeah. feel like you are actually Ooh. there in that place in that moment wow. um yeah so using the latest technology and they're, they're um wanting to highlight as well sort of like indigenous culture as well mm -hmm. which is really important so it's kind of in ancient culture meets modern technology so awesome. a really exciting project yeah, yeah. fascinating can't mm. wait we'll have to stay in touch i know <laughs> that would be awesome and um, you're also involved with the un through the environmental committee yes so i've been involved with the united nations association of wa for several years now i sit on the um environment committee i joined as the ocean lead um, and now i'm chair of the committee so yeah, really good organisation. We do a lot of um, work in the community, um, engaging our members and hold a lot of events throughout the year. And our 
flagship event is coming up. So it's the United Nations 75th birthday um, this month. So we've got the UN Day 2020 coming up, which is um, our flagship event of the year. So yeah, really exciting about that. Oh, a lot happening. Um, so how this works, Amanda and Leila, um, is we put a, a poster saying the topic for next week is this. Uh, obviously, put sharks and people send us uh, questions through social media, Instagram and, um, and Facebook. Go through some of the, go through all of them and pick a representative set of uh, questions that we can address within the time. And we go through them. Yeah. Uh, but before that, this is our mascot. It's a Komodo dragon from uh, Komodo Village, one of my favorite places to work. And, Respect. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I don't so even want to stroke him. He's so, he's so fierce. I was gonna say, absolutely. is it good luck? Should I run? Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Is it? Is it? Oh, oh, <laughs> is man. it really good luck? I'm scared. <laughs> I believe so. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, Leila, he does. <laughs> okay. I've got Jason from my home state of California. Oh, you're a California oh, Yes, I'm a California, yeah, right. Southern California. I don't know where Jason's from, but it doesn't matter. It's from the state, Sunshine State. He's asking, how scientifically true is the belief that sharks can smell drops of blood from kilometers away? He says, I, I see that commonly in popular media, but find it hard to believe. So I think this is a myth that everybody who doesn't know about sharks mm. um, thinks is true. How true is it? I know we do like to use that sort of that catchphrase, don't we? Like Absolutely. Smell like yeah, a yeah, drop yeah. of blood in the water. Um, sharks do have really good sense of smell. Uh, so in about 25 million parts of water, they can detect one part. Don't even know. Like, so, so if you, if you, like, it's like, a, like, that's like a couple of blood, uh, drops of blood in, in a swimming pool, pool like Correct. a standard swimming pool. So they can smell that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But like, if but if you, if you compare that to the ocean. No, but right? they would have to be nearby, wouldn't they? Exactly. About one and a half kilometers. Okay. So it depends. I mean, if you're putting out um, you know, an oil, like a, a slick, right? Um, chumming to chum the water. Yeah. The other thing you have to think of is like how far that gets dispersed. So obviously the ocean, the currents and the movement and everything, it's not just the, a stagnant piece of liquid, you know, a bit of liquid mm. in the water or a drop of blood. I mean, that blood is going to disperse over a long range. And so, yeah, they're able to detect it. Oh, but yeah, it's it's a sort of medium, okay. medium yeah. range sense, okay. medium to long range sense. Because I, I recall being cut with coral in the Red Sea. So, uh, and, if, and and frantically getting out of the water because I thought that's it. I'm going to attract all the sharks. Look, look it's sensible. Mm. It's sensible to do so. But then again, like if you're having a coral cut or a, or a scratch, it's not like every shark out there is going to know that. Oh my, there's ladders in water. Mm. No, um, no. But if you're like, a, if you put in context, like if you are carrying a set of dead fish, if you are a spear fisherman, right? Like mm. if you have a bunch of dead fishing uh, fish bleeding hanging on you. Mm. And um, and especially in a habitat where sharks hunt, mm. um, obviously there's a chance that they'll detect. Mm. Yeah, and and there has been studies done where they've used um, like human blood and then compared it to sort of fish guts or squid. You know, the a shark's sort of main diet, um, what they usually eat, and they're definitely much more attracted to the fish, fish. and the squid. Yeah, yeah. Mm. not so much. Attract. Yeah. So it's yeah. not like any sort of blood or. Mm. You yeah. know, from human or any sort of. It would have a different smell. Yeah, different I mean smell. that that's not mm. their general yeah. source of, of prey, so it's not their go-to. Really. So myth busted. I love it. <laughs> plus, plus, plus uh, I'm, I'm sure I'm going to illustrate that on. I think we have a question uh, later. Um, the, the smell is only one of the many cues that the, that sharks use to hunt. So it's not that they are just looking for smell of fish or blood. Mm. Yeah, it's um, a lot of these apex predators, like I study crocodiles, that's my thing. They're generally predators, so they'll use a wide range of cues mm. finding food. What does that mean, sorry? Okay, so generally meaning like they're not, if you take a, a panda, the only thing that thing eats is bamboo, mm -hmm. right? So they're mm -hmm. very specialized. There are ultra specialists, there are specialists. They don't have much of a like chance koalas. in surviving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. When, when things go wrong, mm. they are depending on one thing, whereas a lot of like larger predators from your know, lions to sharks to uh, crocodilians, obviously they have their preferred set of prey, but they, they, they do, they're curious animals. There has been quite a lot of discussion about what is an apex predator as in like, because it, it, it's context dependent again, yeah. like not all sharks are massive. Mm. How many sharks are there in the world like roughly? Species? Yeah. Uh, 507, I think at last count. Yeah, right. About 1200 are lost in the ranks. Okay. Because that's what I was, the next yeah. lead on question was, how do you determine 
other than the fact that they've got the retractable layers of C-rated teeth, mm. what are the, what, what categorizes a shark? Uh, other than the obvious. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. good question, good yeah. question. Um, Since you're saying like 500 species, there's probably sharks out there that we wouldn't know were sharks. Yeah, so there's, okay. yeah, there's definitely a lot of species that I would say are yet to be discovered um, or potentially have been grouped into one species and potentially they're not. Um, and that's the thing with science, it's always evolving and we're always learning. Um, but in terms of, um, sorry, what was that? So no, well, how, how do you, like, like, how do you oh, know yeah, what shark is? Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. just yeah, what's, yeah. what's what makes um, a shark a shark? So yeah, five to seven gill slits. Um, okay. Gills, yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, so all the other bony fish, like the normal fish we have, has an operculum. They have a mm, color, mm. whereas these guys have slits. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Um, and unlike bony fish, they have a cartilaginous skeleton, mm. so made of cartilage, and that means that the skeleton is a lot lighter. Mm -hmm. Which is something you won't feel, you won't see from externally. Yeah. But yeah, but they don't. And it's not like you're going to cuddle them and find out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so it'll be like your ears yeah. or nose. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but one of the more obvious ones would be their skin. Um, they don't have the typical scales that normal fish have. It will be a very rough skin. Mm -hmm. um, they're like and it's more teeth. like pores. They're, they're, they're like they're, little teeth. So they're yeah. called dermal denticles. But they're, 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 yeah. They're, yeah. Very rough scarier. in oh. one side, right? Yeah. So yeah, if you, if you touch a shark from its head to its tail, it's really soft. Yeah. And then if you run it the other way, it's like sandpaper. And when you magnify oh. the skin, you can see the tiny teeth-like structures. And so that's why it's, it's rough. And I mean, that's why sharks need to protect their skin, um, you know, from being damaged, protect their internal organs. So it needs oh. to be thick. And the female skin is actually much thicker than the males because the males will grab onto them with their teeth um, when they're mating. Mm -hmm. So they have a lot more damage inflicted on them. So they have to, they've developed an evolved thicker skin. Wow. Like most of us females. That's, that, yeah. <laughs> yes. <There you> go. <laughs> That's amazing. That's really, really phenomenal. Yeah. Did you want me to read the next question? Shall I go to the next one? Okay, yeah. the next one. This is from Nate in uh, Wales, United Kingdom. He says, I have heard that Greenland sharks are the longest living creatures on earth. How and why do they live hundreds of years and more so, how would we know they live that long? I love Greenland sharks. Before we, before we go with that, let me, uh, it's, it's, it's multiple, there's mm, few questions mm, in there, right? Yeah, yeah. Have you seen them in the wild? Uh, no, yeah, not yeah. myself. I, yeah, right. what, what do I they cannot look like? do cold water. <laughs> it's a deep sea, um, deep sea, are they ugly? large shark. Are they large. ugly? Because some, you know, some deep ugly, is a, ugly is a... I know, but it, you know, yeah. for, for me, I work I on reptiles. They're all ugly for some. Reason. I don't find them all ugly. I don't find reptiles ugly. And when I mean ugly, like some okay. of the some of the creatures of the deep ocean. Oh, like the weird stuff. <laughs> they, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they have, do. They have yeah, they do. Yeah. To adapt to their surroundings, yeah, yeah, so yeah. they might have really crazy looking eyes yeah. that don't function like a normal eyeball that we'd see True. on a normal shark. So I was just wondering, does the Greenland shark have a distinctive look compared to a normal shark? I think it does. It's I mean, it certainly, has a typical yeah, shape. Typical, yeah, the typical shark shape is there. But it, mm. I mean, some people have, I think, called them maybe floating fossils or something. They kind of mm. look too. They do look primitive. Yeah. They look old. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, they are old, but they, they do. They, yeah. They're not pretty sharks, put yeah. it that way. Because okay. I think sharks are quite beautiful. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. As, as, as creatures go, I don't find yeah. them to be ugly. Yeah. But um, I, don't I, know. I commonly see that thing like they're the longest living uh, creatures. It's, it, so if you, if you consider creatures, creatures is a big, big group, mm. right? So mm. um, if you bring in the plants, there are, there are tree, many trees around the world that has been dated for more than thousands of years, mm. right? So they're obviously in different category altogether. Um, if you bring in the invertebrates, um, which are your all the animals without a backbone? So mm -hmm. your Seven anything members. other than your mammals, your birds, your fish, reptiles, and amphibians. Anything other than that, all your insects, your snails, and whatnot. If you bring on all that group, there are in uh, there are certain types of clams and giant clams that lives for uh, that has been dated for like 500, 600 years. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, among vertebrates, those are the ones with the backbone, like humans. Um, Greenland sharks are considered the longest living. They are, a lot of people would think the Galapagos giant tortoises live for longer, but actual science shows that these guys are the longest living vertebrates. 
how long? Please, Amanda, put me out of my misery. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> they've said at least 272 years. Wow. Maturing at about 156. Mm. Wow. They have. They have said about 400 years as well, um, but I think the authors of that paper have conceded there is a little bit of margin for ever, error in the way that they have tested um, the age because it's, it's quite hard. Ooh. So with fish, they use the ear bone um, and these little rings that develop. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, well, not obviously, but sharks don't have that in an ear bone. And it's why, what, what we mentioned before, because they're cartilaginous. Yeah, they yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No. And yeah. The Greenland sharks have very little calcified um, bones, if you will. So it's really hard. So they use actually the lens and they use radiocarbon dating. The lens of their eyes. Yeah. 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 Proteins in yeah. the lens of their eyes. Yeah. So these proteins, when they are born, they are fixed. So they don't change. So you can actually date them back. Anything that changed would be hard to hard to detect, whereas mm -hmm. these things are fixed when they're born. So mm -hmm. um, I, I, that paper, you're right. Like it's there's a lot of uncertainty. They put a they put a numbers between 270 something and 500 some early 500s mm -hmm. and settle at a middle around 400. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's based on one specimen, isn't it? Like that, like. I that 400 was, comes from one specimen. Oh, the 400. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think when the, yeah the other study had yeah. you know, about 28 yeah, 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 or yeah. something like that. Um, but yeah, I mean it's very interesting. It you know it's actually from human activity that we're able to do this using this carbon um, radiocarbon dating from the um, the radiocarbon carbon in the atmosphere mm -hmm. from testing weapons in the late 1950s. So they can tell um, the radiocarbon in the lens um, that we was talking about that's fixed and so they can say okay well these animals um, have like what's referred to as a bomb pulse um, and then they're able to say well they're at least 60 years old whereas the ones that don't have that high level of radiocarbon then they're like okay well they're they're born before 1960s mm. but how far how back, far back. Yeah. yeah so then that's where it starts getting uh, a little mm. bit murky um, and they have to they have to use other other ways of analysing the radiocarbon in the atmosphere. Um, but yeah, really interesting paper. And there's so much that, you know, we still don't know about Greenland sharks. Do you they... know why they live so long? Does, has anyone made a hypothesis so, as to why? That question they gets have asked such quite often, journey? like why certain things? That's a hard one to answer. Mm. Like why certain genetics. things? Genetics. Like, how is an easier <laughs> one? Genetics. Yeah, genes. Yeah. It's genetics. Um, but I, I think it's also, um, I mean, as, uh, as Amanda said, uh, they live in an environment where it's deep, dark, cold very very mm. very slow metabolism mm. so if you are living in a very active environment where you need to eat and run all the it's time burning, you're, yeah. you are mm. you are burning down your body mm. right your your tissues your organs everything whereas yeah. these guys it's the same as hibernation yeah like you just you, you have very slow metabolism so there's no hurry to do anything if you're living for 300 years so they don't go then they don't travel in that current that most Sharks travel. They only stay in Greenland area, do they? They don't are migrate. So are you referring to the whales, Lava? To, to sharks, because certain sharks will migrate, won't they? I watched a program, sorry, this is where I'm getting a bit. Um, I watched a program where they actually tracked a shark, um, a, God, what's the biggest common well, one? The great white. The great, great white, yeah. yes. Yeah, they, so they, they tracked do. a great white from Europe, let's say the United Kingdom, and they followed her because it was a female all the way down to here to Australia and that was for me that was very fascinating but that's obviously not all sharks and I took that as a big blanket like oh wow sharks. definitely not all yeah sharks. okay um yeah so the Greenland sharks are not sharks that would migrate like the great white the Greenland sharks don't move very quickly and yeah. I mean their heart beats I think once every 12 seconds I was wow. like once a second so wow. you know they're not they don't have a lot of energy to expend you know they're, they essentially live in what is like a marine desert so mm. food is very few and far between so yeah they're not they're not moving quickly um, they you know they don't have the heat the resources to do that um, mm -hmm. white sharks are warm-blooded so they're able to heat their body temperature um, above the outside um, surrounding water so yeah it's very different for Greenland sharks than okay. 
I think, yeah, they only grow, they, they, they said that they think they only grow about one centimetre a year and that's another reason that they've sort of put the, the high age on them. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, they're, they're definitely not. they don't not, mature to like they're 150 years old. So, yeah, yeah. they're definitely not wow. moving. These guys have seen some good stuff. <laughs> if only we had a lens of their mind. Oh, so, like, actually, people yeah. are trying to, people are studying um, Greenland sharks also in the point that how to increase our longevity. Mm. Like, uh, what's their secret? People want to live longer. Yeah, have live more in the coffee. Arctic. Yeah, in the exactly. <laughs> Give me the tropics. Any I was day. just thinking uh, green shark stem cells. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, um, I've got Tom Kitchener from Sydney, and he's asking, "What's the weirdest thing you have seen a shark eat?" <laughs> I put that because my kids wanted that in the list. <laughs> oh, I'm very, I'm very yeah, yeah. curious too because. <laughs> You hear that, you know, they open them up when they have either died or yeah, been yeah. cold. And, yeah. But they have all types of things in them, from mm. gloves to tires to, I don't know, like you hear, I don't know yeah, whether yeah, yeah. it's a fact or not, but that they just kind of scoop up anything. Well, some sharks are definitely, I mean, and it's so, it's so hard to generalize right. having with only 500, over 500 species of sharks. But I think when we refer to sharks, people automatically think of the big the bull shark, the white shark, the tiger shark. Mm. Um, and of those, the tiger shark is omnivorous. And they're known, I guess, to to eat things that aren't really what we would consider food or to be easily digested. Um, I haven't personally seen a shark eat any of these things, but I've heard anecdotal stories. Um, and a lot of, in the 1800s, there was a, a big fascination with sharks and a lot of people were documenting them so they would catch them and they would never release them they would always um, either use them for food or also gut them they had this fascination of what they were eating and so there's these sort of anecdotal reports about them eating you know a suit of armor and a number of plates mm. and, i've seen those common ones. yeah um, attire attire yeah. um you know there's all sorts of things i know that there was there used to be an abattoir i think near sydney harbour and so there would often be sort of remains of, of pigs or cows um mm. In sharks, but you know, you you're living in an environment, and you, you're going to eat what's there. Um, maybe a number of plates, probably not the best thing. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. when because you've got other animals, so the most some of these could be just accidental ingestions, could be yeah. mistaken mm -hmm. prey. Yeah, because I'm thinking, how what's your life expectancy if you've eaten? Yeah. I mean, come on, let's eat a tin can. We might be able to get <laughs> it down, but then you know, how how do you survive? And despite sharks, we have this, you know, this. An interpretation or belief that they are completely impermeable hmm. they aren't no um, sharks are actually able to regurgitate their stomach ah, out for their mouth there so anything that's sort of not digestible <laughs> sitting there so, so eventually they would they spit would out the out. Um, the car plate or the can mm -hmm. or a piece of tire okay so I'm how, not sure how common that is yeah exactly yeah, these are one just, but, but, yeah, but I'm just thinking how do they how do they exactly. keep that in and, their gut and some of these could be like set up things too like a, yeah. a lot of these say, come yeah. from fishermen um, yeah, got the shark. Tales, and, old yeah, exactly. Tales, yeah. But but the, as as uh, Amanda said, like they do eat some fascinating stuff. So I have a paper at the moment in review looking at um, uh, a population of sea snakes that went extinct uh, in a reef that belongs to Australia, Ashmore Reef, and we are looking at different hypotheses. And one is an increase in shark numbers um, because sharks do, especially tiger sharks. Um, there, there's quite a lot of actual dissected um, specimens that had a lot of sea snakes in them. So around the world, like from Japan to parts of Darwin to Queensland, we have had a lot of tiger sharks uh, with sea snakes in them. Um, there's work from Exmouth showing sea snakes change their behavior based on shark behavior. So mm -hmm. sea snakes comprise a part of uh, the diet in quite a few shark species. Um, there's also, I recently came up with a, looking for something else. Um, so this paper on bull sharks. Bull sharks travel upstream a lot in Australia. Like, uh, I have a site in Fritzoy Crossing, uh, close to 480 kilometers from shore, and we have bull sharks there. Wow! Right, 400, mm. 480. Like, yeah, like that's one of my crocodile sites. Um, and they they eat land birds. Like their stomach contents actually have contained quite a lot mm. of land birds. Uh, that comes to, I actually don't know how they catch, but uh, yeah, they are not water birds. They are not ducks. They are actual like passerine uh, land birds that comes for um, a for drink drinking. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So unexpected things do turn up in shark stomachs mm. but um, the stuff we discussed that's 
certainly not really, things that really they rely on. Made of, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. made of, I think, especially a coat of armor is probably <laughs> one that How old was that? Really, want, you know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. someone who wanted some, some, some kudos and look exactly. at it, that legend is carried through to modern yeah. day time. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. yeah. Okay. I've got uh, Agus Bessa from Jakarta, uh, Indonesia, asking, is it true that sharks must continuously swim to stay afloat? How do they rest when they're asleep? Uh, so the answer is yes and no. So <laughs> some, again, the diversity of sharks. Uh, so some do, and they're called what we call ram ventilators. So they need to continuously swim like the great white shark. And that's to get oxygen or oxygenated water over, through its mouth and into its mouth and through its gills. But they're so, resting, they're in a rest state. No, oh. no, this is when they're, they're awake. Um, and then you have other types of sharks that are able to sort of gulp water through their mouth and, and push it over their gills. And that's so they can rest. In terms of sleep, um, or resting, we really have barely even touched the surface. Um, in terms of the animals that can go water in through their mouth and over their gills, they, they do have periods of inactivity and that is potentially a rest or sleeping. Um, we don't know a lot about it. Um, with the animals or the sharks that need to ventilate, ram ventilation, there really isn't any scientific rest. Well, wow. there's, we don't we don't know. There's no yeah, scientific know. Yeah. evidence mm. to say yeah mm. that that sharks asleep um, or sleeping as we know it. So there's there's been sort of evidence of sharks doing kind of weird behaviour in the shallows, um, swimming in really highly oxygenated water with their mouth open, and they've hypothesised that potentially the shark's sleeping. But yeah, we just science just doesn't know yet. Wow. I mean, just to put context for what uh, Amanda said, like it's the um, so normal fish would have a fish bladder. It's a it's it's imagine a balloon inside a fish. Mm -hmm. It determines uh, your yeah. balance, right? Mm. Yeah. Um, sharks don't have that. In, um, they have a liver. With, it's, they're using a liver, like an oil filled liver, right? Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Um, so so yeah. you're no swim control. bladder. Yeah, yeah. No swim bladder, but their their floating is controlled by this liver, but it's not still as effective as a swim bladder. Um, so. But also the the whole idea of sleeping, like we so we, we think sleeping as like you sleep during the night time for eight hours in a row and then awake during daytime. A lot of animals don't do that, like including your own pets, right? They have periods of rest and then active despite day and night. Mm -hmm. um, so it's the idea of sleep is quite different in humans and some of the upper aim, uh, mm. apes mm. compared to rest of the animal world. Yeah. So it's not that okay, I'm going to have two hours of sleep now and go to the bottom. Um, but there are sharks that there are as as um, as she said like there are sharks that are bottom dwelling who would just stay in one place uh, like the bobby Kongs and others mm -hmm. um, but quite different to like massive sharks. I have never seen I've seen quite a few sharks diving and snorkeling but I've never seen a great white sharks like lie down yeah, fins <laughs> no, out. Yeah, come yeah. on guys yeah, so, but, like, it's, it's with that, his fins behind his head right? exactly <laughs> so, so it's not that the larger ones actually like do rest on no. a surface have you ever seen a larger species on like actually on a surface i just mean like cruising you know no like, no no, no, like, no just just like, you know cruise control so yeah he's not asleep but he's not you when you see them they're normally moving and their tails are going and and so i would imagine in my interpretation that him resting or her resting, yeah. it resting, would just be them in a more calmer state, but still or, gliding through the water. Mm -hmm. But kind of like when you're a bit sedated when you wake up, I'm just not, kind of like, you know, in a rim, they're, they're, mm. they're conscious, but they're not conscious, you know? But not, not only that, like, I mean, some of the sharks that swim in columns like lemon sharks, and you still see them on surfaces sometimes, like in crevices, on, on like boulders, you can, you sometimes actually see them still lying on surfaces or resting on surfaces or whatever. Mm -hmm. But some of the pill, like the column hunters, like the great whites um, mm. or tiger sharks, or like even their juveniles. Is I, that why I they're have... so hungry? Because they just never stop moving? Well, yeah, they do yeah, have yeah, a, yeah, a they actually have a yeah, uh, yeah, metabolism. Yeah, yeah. And also because they're able, they're um, endothermic, so they're able to heat their, yeah. control their body temperature mm. like so we they are. they burn a lot and more. And that, that yeah. uses a lot of energy, mm. yeah. So we don't know. I mean, those sort of sharks can't stop swimming. They mm. need to keep swimming. Um, so how they sleep or how we interpret how they sleep, mm. um, you know, as we yeah, said, exactly. sleep means different things for different animals. So mm. we just haven't really worked it out yet. 
but it's no, exciting. No. So That's actually absolutely. a fascinating question. Yeah, yeah. very, yeah, very yeah, fascinating yeah. Yeah, question. Because for, for 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 a species that relies on rest, like if we didn't yeah, rest, yeah. we'd die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, so, so the concept yeah. of like thinking, well, no, you become delirious and yeah, you, you know yeah. start hallucinating, and they've proven yeah. like we have to rest. Yeah. So to think that you know maybe there are creatures out there in the in the world in the universe that require either very minimal mm. or next to none mm. is just mm. like wow that and for me that would that would that i would want that over long like living forever yeah because i think mm. living forever it has its perks but then it also has it takes the enthusiasm yeah. away it's like you know what i'll do it in 200 years yeah, yeah. Exactly. why yeah. would i bother now I mean, like, as, like the, the activity in the animal world is it, it's too extremes the other end would be like koalas and your sloths <laughs> yeah would be like sleeping for yeah. like i don't know but 10 to hours think day. that i could just yeah. keep going because i could take a nap right now with or the they're that... swimming while they're sleeping so it's like imagine if you could exercise while you're asleep yeah absolutely yeah. Like, yeah. Like, not bump into other stuff yeah, yeah. Yeah, not bump into things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so just yeah, that, yeah. that yeah. seems like an ultimate superpower to, yeah. to need very minimal rest. Yeah, true. yeah. Oh, yeah. Because we're always talking about how tired we are. And how little time we have. Yeah. 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 So that's a great, great question by uh, Agus Bessa of Jakarta. Yeah. Um, so, Steph Viz from Perth, he or she wants to know, what is your take on the current shark controls and calls in Australia? And this is really quite controversial for me too when I read this one. Um, humans go to their habitats and then expect an apex predator to not see humans as prey. I see it as unethical, unjustified and unnecessary. I see no evidence uh, to support that it has reduced shark attacks. Value your insight. Mm. <laughs> I know. Very controversial. Yeah. Very controversial. Yeah. Especially here in WA. I know. I know you're you're a scientist. I'm a and, scientist and a biologist. And... Sorry, a, a marine biologist. Yeah. For me, as I mean, I'm luckily enough. I feel like I can say it. I didn't. I grew up in California, so we have sharks. Mm -hmm. and we have shark attacks, and you know, we grew up with the fear of sharks. You come to Australia and for some reason, and I understand we have more because our waters are warmer and things like that, but there's still sharks. Correct. Like for me, I think whether there are three shark sightings or there's 10 shark sightings, you have to take into the fact that sharks live in this water. Yeah. And just as though you go to the North Pole and you know there's polar bears or you go into the forest of the national parks in America and there's grizzlies or brown bears, it's their habitat. Mm. And as a human being who loves their habitat, first of all, I enter it with respect. It, again, as you correctly said, there are two sides to each story, right? So um, if you are a victim or if you are a relative of a victim, the, your, your ideology, your mentality about, or your opinion about that is completely different to someone who has never experienced that. Yeah. And also there's a political side when something goes wrong, if you don't do something, then there's a political backlash for that too. Like we see that with crocodiles all the time. Like uh, there's a crocodile attack, why is the government not doing anything? That crocodile should, where, where are the body parts of my dead relative? Um, on the other hand, when, when a crocodile get culled or for any other animal get culled because of that, then there's another backlash about, okay, why are we killing animals? So mm -hmm. it's a very sensitive one. There's, um, in my personal, well, uh, not opinion, but from what I've seen, what science proves, there's no easy solution for yeah. a lot of these things. No, mm -hmm. um, absolutely not. But I'm actually keen to know whether uh, whether the shark culls. I'm, I'm, I'm not aware of. I'm not aware of the extent of it. But um, mm. has that been proven successful anywhere to like reduce or mitigate the issue or the conflict? Well, there. I think a lot of scientists agree that it's not effective, and I personally would like to see us use greater technology. I mean, this technology, if you want to call it that, the nets and the drum lines, I mean, mm. they're 50, 60, 70 plus years old. I mean, what technology do we still use that's yeah, that old? Yeah. I mean, you know, we didn't even have phone, mobile phones back then, never yeah. mind one that's 70 years old. Um, so I think, I think I can say on behalf of a lot of scientists and a lot of obviously conservationists that we, we don't really see, want to see this kind of mitigation strategy used. Um, it's very indiscriminate especially the nets 
um, because obviously they, they catch so much bycatch, um, mm. you know, dolphins and whales, um, you know, we've seen in Turtles. Queensland recently mm. that a, a calf was entangled and, mm. um, and it's just really horrible to see and a lot of them don't survive because they're, they're drowning, they drown. Um, so, yeah, I think we need to move away from that. And I also think the nets give a false sense of security. I mean, people think, oh, it's a netted beach, like it's an enclosure. It's not. It's, you know, on a on a beach that's maybe several kilometres wide, I mean, the net will be 150 metres wide yeah. and it'll be six metres from the bottom. So it's basically like putting a, a tennis net, you know, right. a band, okay. yeah, a band, right. a band. Yes. A band. So it really goes under the yeah, band, yeah, yeah, yeah. over, around, oh, yeah. you know, and and so it's just kind of catching what what goes through there. So yeah, I think I think it's twofold. It has this false sense of security, and you know, it's really detrimental to the environment. So. How often do these nets get checked? You know, like we've got one here in Sorrento. Do, the, do they get checked on a, on a regular basis? The Sorrento one, I don't think that was meant to catch. That was a... That's a barrier. That's a it's barrier. A barrier yeah. That's a physical yeah. barrier to keep. And that's that's not to actually control. That's to provide a physical barrier between oh, swimmers and... Okay. And yeah, completely different. Okay. Uh, like Because I've heard idea. the technology where they've got like the sonar or the, the beacons that they put into the ground. That I think we have a question on that. Is too. that the next? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, um, I think that one only works with tagged animals as well. So, there, I mean, there's limitations to everything, but I think we can definitely move beyond what we have been using. I think it's just a really kind of lowbrow yeah. response. It's very archaic. I think, mm. you know, I think we're a little bit more developed than that mm. um, intellectually. And, and yeah, as you said, sort of coexist as well. Mm. So, you know, nothing's going to be foolproof, um, you know, other than potentially, I guess, the sort of enclosure that we talked about. I mean, that's a physical enclosure. Yeah. Um, so it's effectively kind of like being in a swimming pool, um, you know, in the ocean, if you like. I mean, small things will get through, but nothing, yeah. nothing big. And, and the idea that, look, uh, if, you, if you're scared of sharks, you shouldn't be exploring. I, I don't think that's a practical one. Mm. Um, like it's same as like, if, if you are scared of, uh, uh, snakes don't go bushwalking like it's or not going to happen right yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah, yeah. people are going to explore the ocean the surroundings regardless yeah. so um, hmm. as long as uh, as you said like as you you understand the risks and mm. um, and we have better ways of mitigating that mm. yeah we I don't think in my personal opinion we haven't still reached that no, yeah. no. no. It's, it, it, I, I feel that even though it's a very important topic on the agenda there's so many other topics that this one gets pushed aside until it is brought up again, yeah. until yeah. something happens yeah. again. I feel like it's one of those things that whoever, governments, politicians, yeah. states kind of go, yeah, we'll get to that. And they're dealing with so many other things until yeah. something happens. They go, oh, we need to bring that back out again. But yeah. they just go around in circles. And then they have a knee jerk reaction, yeah, not exactly. one that exactly. has long term mm -hmm. effects. Mm -hmm. yeah, the thing so. is that with a lot of these things, crocodile attacks, uh, shark attacks, it's it's the media too, like uh, mm -hmm. the attention you get when you talk, when you consider the numbers, I, I, they are, they're quite low compared to many other yeah. causes of death. Um, yeah. in Australia and worldwide. Um, I, re I, I haven't seen the science behind it, but uh, more people have died trying to take selfies um, than some of the animal attacks, mm -hmm. right? So th these are probably just media yeah. things again. But then again, the point is that the numbers are quite low. It's not that hundreds and thousands of people are dying from and um, from shark attacks. No, no. Did people die more often in car accidents. Oh, very much so. Know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fatalities. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, I mean, bees, dogs, cows, exactly. falling so coconuts. Dogs? So dogs kill the most. Like for any animal group in Australia, um, dog attacks are the the biggest the highest, cause. Yep. yep. And um, I would have to say that's the same over in Europe. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. In Asia, it's mosquito-borne diseases, so mosquitoes kill more animals than and then snakes. So mm -hmm. yeah, um, so the sharks, crocodiles, they are but, but low in the. Look at look at that! It's just, it's just find it fascinating. So we still love our dogs. Mm. There's a lot of psychology behind it. I still almost, love our dogs. I'd almost you know I'd love. To We're sit cautious down. of them. We ask people, can we pet them? Mm. But we don't have that same kind of yeah, no. approach, education, yeah. awareness the cute and than, to the, than to the, um, mm. the ocean. Yeah, I, I think people need to take a little bit of responsibility for Absolutely. themselves. It's mm. not just the government issue mm. and it's mm. not just an individual issue. I think we all, at, at many levels, it needs to be addressed. Yeah. And as Ruth said, it's 
I mean, it's front page every time it happens. Exactly. And there's a dog attack. I mean, that doesn't make the front page, no. but it's just, it's everywhere. Like sharks mm. sell, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah, sharks yeah. sell papers. Mm, um, absolutely. So yeah, it gets a lot of attention when mm. it happens. And it is obviously a, a really devastating event when it occurs, but it is still extremely rare. Mm. Okay, Stephen Bishop from Singapore has sent in a question asking, have we succeeded making a, an effective shark deterrent or detecting system? Good question. That goes back to the previous one too. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it, I mean, this is, I think, what people want to know more than anything. Exactly. When, you know, um, is Can I go in the water? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, Ocean Guardian Shark Shield have uh, several published papers on the effectiveness. Uh, so yeah, they have been shown to be effective in deterring sharks, um, specifically great whites. And uh, there is a lot of myths around them. So they, a lot of people sort of believe that potentially they attract sharks, um, but both studies um, that were most recently done have said that there's no evidence to suggest that. So I think that's sort of your best personal um, deterrent at the moment mm -hmm. uh, there's some others on the market but you know until they're scientifically tested and there's no regulations around this market it's a it's a new commercial market yeah. and mm. so there's not any legislation so you or i for instance can say well you know i think this device will do it and we can start selling it mm. um, and there's there's nothing around that to, to and, the, and no then there's the instance where the guy who actually had his shark deterrent around his ankle who got eaten not that long ago? Was it last year or the beginning of the year? So, call, so I mean, as I mentioned, like the so the the shark shield that works mm. in the electric field, isn't it? Correct. Right. So there, yeah. there are quite a is that few. An ankle? Is that an ankle bracelet? The ones that you normally have. Yeah. Yes, for mm. divers, mm. Um, and then there's one you put onto the surfboard, surfboard as well. Yeah. You need mm. to install yeah. them. Yeah. Um, but that's only one category. There are magnetic ones like the shark shockers. Then there are. Um, there's even sprays there are uh, visual ones there are you can you can mm. get these eyes that you can put on your swimsuits your uh, so it's it's there's a it's whole vast. spectrum it's, of yeah, uh, yeah like anything that sharks any of the the senses that sharks use to hunt mm. there there are deterrents so from smell the smell use dead shark smell apparently mm. yeah yeah um mm. and magnetic ones then but the only one that has been independently Tested mm -hmm. are the um, the uh, what is it called the, the shark shield shark shield, shark yeah. shield yeah. UWA ran that research uh, yeah, correct. yeah 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 but even then um, like the the paper actually tells that look there's so many there's only so many conditions that you can test in a laboratory or under mm -hmm. controlled conditions mm -hmm. whereas there can be zillion others um, in the um, out there so it's not that it's going to work every time for every shark under every condition mm. but among the available um options it's, the highly, it's the most yeah. highly regarded yeah, mm. yeah. like I, I mean um, as she said like there's there's plenty of if you go to the producer's website there are like thousand people uh have worn this and um and haven't had no issues right mm. so but those are not independently tested those are <laughs> yeah. the producer saying or the manufacturer saying yeah um thousand people probably 900 of them were in waters where there's no shark so yeah who knows but yeah. whereas there's only uh, like I agree that it's the the only product that has been independently tested mm. yes um, is the um, shark shield yeah and it's it's great that UWA like a local university was the uh, pioneer in that mm. yeah 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 and there's the wetsuits as well oh, okay. um, yeah so there's one of them emulates that of a uh, poisonous snake so the black and white stripes and then one that sort of makes you camouflage into the water oh. But yeah, as we said, it's the it's the shark shield. That's the only one that's been sort of scientifically tested. Yeah. Um, mm. start, had a few studies done. So, mm. yeah, because that market isn't really regulated, I I wouldn't be putting my money or my life yeah. Um, yeah. on some of these products. Mm. But uh, but that one seems. I'm to be sure, the and I'm sure as we go on, that there will be more independent tests and, and products and things in the market. And and, uh, and you uh, you made an uh, important point there, like uh, the fact that there's a belief that they actually attract sometimes shark, like because it's an electric field, mm. and that has been disproved too. There's actually a um, paper looking at that. But then again, as I said, like we are not saying that okay, that's the one to use and uh, jump in water. Mm. Um, that these works under certain conditions for certain animals, um, but there can be exceptions. Mm. And and I I've often wondered going back to this, like when we have the huge event, the Rado um, mm. 
swim from Fremantle to Rottnest. There are hundreds of people in the water. Yeah. There's sharks in that water. <laughs> so obviously, you know, the sharks, I know they have helicopters and things to, to fly over the area to spot in the event of, but I would assume because there's so much activity in the water, it would scare them off or no? Potentially. I mean, sharks are viewed as, as these sort of mindless killers, but they're actually, for anyone who's ever been diving with them, they're actually quite timid. timid. Um, you know, so it's quite hard to get them to come near you a lot of the time because, you know, they're wary. They're, they're wary and they're mm. protective of themselves. Um, you know, if they get injured, if they, they damage their eyesight, they're not going to be able to hunt. So, so they are, they are curious. And I think that's where we get in trouble with sharks is, uh, you know, they are curious and so they'll come in and have a look, but a little of the time that they're, they're not interested. Mm. So, yeah. And I think, I think in terms of, of these shark deterrents, you know, we've got the new drone technology, oh, which yeah. is so much cheaper, you know, so much more cost effective than helicopters Flying and things. Yeah. So it's a myriad of things that, that can be used and just having common sense exactly. as well, I think, you know, don't go swimming in amongst bait balls. Yeah, um, murky waters, the, the, the yeah, dark, yeah, dark there's, hours. There's apps you can download that, that tell you if there's been a sighting. Right. Yeah, yeah, but the, 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 the sightings once yes, but there's also a shark track, there's a website, but those are only, as you said, those are the only the, it tagged. only shows the tagged animals. Yes. Yeah, yeah. There's, but but is, is, the app that I'm thinking, is that not just one where they've actually sighted a shark and they've put it up on a website? Right, okay. Yeah, That's what I'm saying, there's, okay. there's an app where okay. it's just, no, if there's been a sighting of one, right, they actually yeah, put yeah. an app. So if you were going to be going out and, yeah. you know, whether yeah. you were going spearfishing or something, yeah. you wanted to check before you went out, yeah. there are websites that you can go on to, to cool. check if there had been a sighting. But yeah, so there's, there's definitely things that, that we can do and, and just be smart about it. And, you know, nothing's going to be foolproof. At the end of the day, they're a wild animal. Um, you know, seatbelts are, are foolproof, yeah. but no. we wear them and no. they, you know. Neither, neither are your airbags. Well, yeah. that's it. But you, know. you do it to minimize yeah. your yeah, risk. Yeah, yeah, and I yeah. think that's what we need to keep in mind yeah. that, you know, um, don't go chumming the water and jumping in it because you've got a shark shoot on. Be sensible, sensible mm. about mm. it and know mm. its limitations. Yes, yeah. great questions. Judy uh, Greenlease from Sydney has asked, many different species of sharks are harvested around the world. Are any of the shark fisheries sustainable? They believe that only around 9% are sustainable. So... Which is nothing. It's very small. Um, mm. So it is possible, um, but more often than not, it doesn't really happen. Um, and then I think we, there are so many other aspects to this, more so than just, uh, you know, are these fisheries sustainable? It's, you know, the health implications of consuming sharks that contain high levels of mercury. Mm. Uh, it's the shark finning industry. Uh, a lot of people say, well, you know, we harvest the shark, let's use the whole body. You know, we may as well sell the fins for shark fin soup. There's such a black underground market for mm. shark fins. Mm. Now, once you put the sustainable sustainably harvested fins into the mix you don't know which is which so you know you might be you know you might order shark fin soup and it could come from an endangered species you know mm. that's been finned alive potentially from yeah. an un, um, unregulated fishery and that's i think the main problem with shark they fisheries them alive, do they? so the the so there was a for a, still is the case land the shark meat is not that expensive mm. so the space taken for a whole shark can be saved if you just just harvest the fins and drop the body. Mm. So in, I know that it's the case in Sri Lanka. There's few a few countries where you 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 can't land like in the port. You have to land the whole body. Yeah. So you can't just bring fins or parts of an animal. Mm. Um, it was a way of saving space because the the amount of money you make from fins mm. is yes. massive compared to um, bringing the whole oh, shark okay. in. Yeah. Yeah. So that's like the live finning. I'm just sorry. I'm still sitting here like yeah. trying to get over the fact that they would just. Humans do cruel things. I know, yeah. but I mean, mm. we're here in 2020, mm. guys. Mm. This is what's still like. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm somewhat speechless because you would, you would hope and think, from my perspective, we, we would do something to change that. Yeah. As, as human in beings. In an ideal world. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, animals are the the fourth biggest illegal trade in the world. Mm. So, I mean. You know where there's money there's there's going to be a black market so mm -hmm. yeah fins as we said are worth an extraordinary amount of money mm -hmm. and uh, you know some people do it to survive and they have no choice and then there's a whole 
sort of side of it, the black market side of it, mm. that yeah. has so many other aspects to it. Um, yeah, which unfortunately comes at the detriment of the shark and shark populations, because mm. obviously once they have their fins removed, um, they can't survive. Of course yeah, not. Yeah. So. Yeah. Come and take my skin. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, <laughs> you know, yeah. I'll be all right. It's, I don't need it all. A lot, a lot of people don't know that this goes on, and we. No, I, I was completely shocked. Like I, I honestly, right yeah, now wanted yeah. to fall open because I, I know I've, I've actually had shark fin soup. Mm. I'm not going to lie. Many you can years have ago. that in Perth too. Like you can actually. But, get but now I'm, too. like Amanda was saying, I, I'd be a little bit more discerning because yeah. you don't know where it's come from. Yeah. And yeah. at the same time, to think that maybe. You know, and, and at the same time, I'm all about using everything. So if yep. you're just taking the fin and discarding the meat because the meat isn't valuable yeah. or desirable, a what a waste. How yeah. wasteful. It's, you know? Yeah, you wouldn't mm. kill a pig and, and just you take know, its trotters. Take its and its, its, yeah. And yeah, that's exactly. effectively yeah. it's the same thing. You, they're, yeah. they're throwing 97% of the shark mm. away. Mm. I mean, it's incredibly wasteful. Um, mm. And yeah, there's a lot of restaurants in Perth and in Australia that are actually selling it, which really surprises people as mm. well. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And we do import shark fins and export them. So, you know, there's there's that still, yes, we might have some sustainable shark fisheries here, but 9% if is we're just... importing shark fins as well, mm. we don't know what species they are. We don't know where they're coming from. There's no regulations on it's that. It's very hard to trace because they, mm. they all move. Um, so a lot of the processing goes to Hong Kong. So they come in from all different countries around the world to Hong Kong, gets processed and then shipped back out. So, I mean, tracing that is almost next to and impossible. And it doesn't tell you on the packet what type no, of... No. They don't have to. No, no, no. It's just shark fin. Yeah. yeah. Mm. They don't oh, have to, unfortunately. Wow. On that note, that, that I think you should have put that question at the top. Because now... <laughs> yes. <laughs> But I'm, I think, trying I'm, hold, I'm trying to hold back the tears here, Ruth. But that that was a that was a good combination of. Oh, it's really, we covered quite a lot of topics. Absolutely, mm. absolutely. Yeah. We had some really good questions. Thank you so much, Pleasure. both of you. Pleasure. Um, Thanks, that was, that was that was I, I learned a lot. That was fascinating, and mm. um, this is exactly what I want to do. Um, take actual science, be it myth busting, be it, uh, be it new new knowledge, mm. um, to the general public. But actual science is, Excellent. and uh, I think I think you did an awesome job. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank and you, Leila, Thank yeah. you very much thank for you. Um, thank hosting you. me. No, this is um, amazing. I'm going to go back and share this with my children. Please do. Mm. Um, so the next episode will be questions kids have about animals, and um, yeah, I'm going to do it with my junior. The next episode, all the kids' questions. So everyone with kids who have a lot of questions about uh, the living world, send them through our. Sounds fun. Fabulous. Absolutely. Cool. And uh, Leila, I think we also have to thank the, the venue. Beautiful, oh, beautiful yes. venue. It is. Yes. yes. We're sitting here behind us, this beautiful backdrop at yeah. um, Coast in Port Beach here in Western Australia. It is a must see. Once Port is open, you need to come down here and have a look. Absolutely. And something it's to eat. An amazing us? venue here, <laughs> right next to the ocean. Beautiful. Yeah. I don't think you'll get a better view. No. Anywhere nah. else. no. This is actually <laughs> yeah. like if you yeah that Prime evening estate. drink. Mm. Yeah. This is the place to come if you are in Frio. I'm or staying for the rest of the afternoon. Absolutely. Let's <laughs> have totally. a wine. <laughs> really, totally sure. Yeah. With that note, um, thank you very much for joining, and um, we'll see you again uh, in the next episode where kids talk about their questions um, on the living world. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome.